joining us uh, we welcome you to the session on uh, exploring impact through poetry and uh, the session is about using words and using poetry and using the form of art to create an impact into the lives of the less fortunate into the lives of the un underserved um this is this is the philosophical this is the other part of uh, of of uh, creating an impact this is where we use our talent this is where we use our skills to create awareness about issues that that uh, the world faces that a lot of people in the world face um we are trying to start a dialogue here we're trying to uh, showcase some strong poetry some some strong uh, uh, to to deliver a strong message to the world and to everybody who is listening to us to allow people to to give people what they need uh, to create that awareness to allow uh, the world to breathe to to let everyone live and uh, again once again we thank you for uh, for coming here for for listening to us uh, over the next 1 hour over the next 60 minutes we'll be reciting some of our uh, poetry we'll be uh, playing a small little icebreaker game with you and uh, we'll we'll take this opportunity uh, to spread the word uh and and hope that it reaches the the spaces that it needs to go to uh, we would also encourage you if you have any uh uh and any any uh favorite poetry is any favorite poets that you want to talk about that you want to recite please let us know and and uh, we'll try to make some time for you nancy um over to you thanks ashay um and uh, thank you everyone for joining us um so, um, and thank you, Asha, for that very poetic uh, description of why this session, right? Um, so just to uh, set the stage, right, I think this is a very um, intimate session. We wanted to recite a couple of our uh, poems, but we also just wanted to learn from uh, fellow um, people like you who, who are interested in impact and poetry both at the same time and to see what um, can be created at that conjuncture. So um, to just start it off, um, you know, we wanted to do a little bit of introduction um by a quick icebreaker so i'll actually request ash if you could um, pull up the screen and also put the link in the chat um for the slide so so basically i'll i'll, I'll request each of each one of you to uh, write one word which um you would use to describe your life right now uh, i'm sure a lot of things are going on in your life and one word doesn't suffice but uh, let's try and keep to that so the question is what one which one word would you use to describe your life right now um please use the uh link asha pasted on the chat to open the slide and sort of uh write that one word please so we have uh already added a couple of words happiness is something that uh daniel uh sees as, as being very important to him words are uh, mine nancy uh, can we have yours yep i'm just typing in it's... if you want to add your name in front of the word that you wrote feel free to do that so i can talk um i hope all of you are able to access the link and type if you're facing any issue do, do type it on the chat or feel free to unmute yourself and and speak up as well i think we have a new uh joiny uh kumlam we're doing an activity um wherein we all of us are writing one word uh that we would use to describe our life so
Ashes, yeah. I think we have a couple of more people joining us. So just to, um, so we, Ash and I are hosting this session um, at the conjuncture of impact and poetry. Uh, to start it off, we're doing a icebreaker. Um, if all of you could click on the link and um, write one word there, a word that would you would use to describe your life right now. Let's probably, I'm just pasting the link again for everybody who joined. Right. And uh, I think if it would be fine if you if you want to just uh, add your word on the chat, we can just put it on the slide. That's fine too. If you're unable to access the uh, document. Yes, Abhi. So the question is, what one word would you use to describe your life right now? Okay, so uh, Mayank says... Uh, present. Self-esteem. Great. Self-awareness, yes, thanks. So I think while you're typing in and feel free to type the word on the chat or, or, or on the slide, um, we, you could probably share a bit more about this, right? Abhi, do you wanna share more? Um, you, you chose the word free, so do you, wanna, do you wanna share more about it with us? You can unmute yourself and uh, speak please. Sure, happy to. Um, I guess I chose th that word because um, I've got some uh, free time coming up between jobs, so I'll have a couple of months off, and so that feels like a lot of relief um, for me because it's been a busy period. Um, yeah, so that's front of mind right now. Great. That's and I also get to uh, visit home again soon but I, I live abroad um and so i haven't been home for two and a half years and i've booked my flights home so i feel like like soon i'll also be free to move and travel back home amazing and i think with covid uh, the travel was not possible for a lot of us this last one and a half year right great thank mm -hmm. you for sharing that abby um my auntie my auntie said self-esteem do you want to do you want to share uh, a bit more on that yes sure so um I mean, this is a recently I had uh, I changed my job and uh, there's a lot of suffering and exploration into different kinds of things, kind of comedy and and poetry and and drama and everything. And the last two three years I've been doing multiple things, uh, but I've realized this self esteem and it has come up in my counseling also multiple times. Self esteem has been a theme that uh, I've been exploring for a lot of time, uh, probably because of how I was brought up. And then this has come up in a lot of my work and this has come up in terms with, also in terms of how I empathize with people. So I think, uh, I think that is something that comes at the top of my head right now. I think that's very personal and uh, deep. Thank you for sharing that, Mayank. And I think, uh, Ash and I were just discussing, uh, right, most of the poets that have been ever born actually started writing out of a dark place or when they were sad. So I think that's where the poetry probably emerges from. Uh, thank you so much, Mayank, for sharing uh, that. Um, we have a new participant. Um, welcome. Welcome, Puru. Um, Komlam, do you want to share about uh, self-awareness that you wrote uh, here? Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Nancy. Uh, so for me, self-awareness is very important because um, 
I want to be in the present moment, you know, not to always be on the run, but it's also uh, helped me to set uh, boundaries for myself. Um, so yeah, this is uh, the two main reasons why I choose self-awareness. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Nino. I think that's again very personal. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, mm -hmm. Would now we, we're just doing a icebreaker activity. You're all writing a word, a uh, one word that we would use to describe our life. So it'll be great if you want to type in that word on the chat, and we'll be happy to add it uh, on the site. Um, Michael, do you want to share uh, about the word that you wrote? And post that we can probably dive into the poetry. But I, I would love to hear what was your perspective when you wrote it, Chris. Hi, Michael. Yeah, yeah. Well, hello. Well, like the rest of us, like the rest of us, uh, I'm uh, I'm locked down, so uh, I welcome this three-day forum, which I can attend because here I am in prison. Did you get that? Yeah. Thank All you. Right. So much. That's it then. <laughs> uh, yeah. Over to you, poets, now. Thanks, Michael. I see we have two more new joinees, uh, Kuku and Himani. Uh, do you want to quickly um, help us with the word here that you would use to describe your life? Just one word that probably just uh, comes at the top of your mind. Just put it on the chat and uh, it's sort of a way to, for us to get to know you and then we'll uh, you know, take time into the poetry uh, for today. Uh, if I can request you to type in that word uh, in the chat for the next couple of seconds. Um, while, while they're adding, uh, Daniel, if I can request you to uh, just tell us a little bit about why you chose happiness and what it means yeah. to you. <laughs> and we have another person choosing happiness. So. Oh, yeah. great. I mean, go ahead, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Nancy. Thanks, Ashe. Um, I think for me, happiness is, um, I think, more, more aligned to joy in terms of you know uh, uh, focusing on, on 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 things that of course you're enthusiastic happy about um, of course uh, you know I, I think there's given the current state of the world there's a lot of uh, information happenings and events that I ideally can you can be sad about uh, but again I, I think Focusing on uh, you know the two three two three things that again you know make you look forward to the day you know it could be family it could be your work um, you know it could be a sport um, it could be even poetry uh, what you are doing now so I think uh, that that's the frame of mind I, I sort of have uh, in this season thank you great actually I think we have uh, two more words so. Himani, you chose quirky. Um, do you want to share a bit about that with us? So I've written quirky for myself because I believe that uh, I like going out of the way uh, to experiment. Be it be my, you know, my looks, my other ways. Be it be uh, like I love doodling and I like abstract doodling. So I think I just like doing something which is unique and abstract and. Uh, you know, is not very self-explanatory. So I find myself, like, I like to describe myself as quirky. So, yeah. Great. Thank you so much for sharing that, Imani. And we would love of, to see all of you, uh, given it's a small intimate session, for whoever who can turn on their videos, we would love to uh, see all of you. Um, uh, thank you for this. Um, with this, I'll actually request Ashe to probably take this down and... Um, Let's start with what we are here for, the poetry. 
Um, Asha, over to you. Sure, thank you, Nancy. And uh, thank you everyone uh, for, for uh, giving us a little bit of insight about you and your life and your current state of mind. The idea of, of uh, the exercise was to get to know everybody and to understand how um, how our lives are, are built around certain uh, certain emotions, certain certain words that we feel uh, at different points in time. Um, I have been uh, associated with the uh, okay, right. So I've been associated with the climate change and energy uh, space for a very long time, and uh, that is something that is close to my heart. Uh, it's something where I would like to make a difference if, if I am ever uh, able to do that. Um, when I when we were discussing uh, this session, uh, one thing that came to my mind was why not join two of my passions, uh, get them married, uh, which resulted in uh, a poetry about climate. Uh, so the piece I'm, that I'm going to recite now, it's, it's about... Uh, it's against, it's, it's, it has a lot of angst. It has a lot of uh, anger against the people who have brought us to this point. Uh, those are the people, uh, anyone that you can think of, the people who roam around in their jets, in their super fast cars, the fuel guzzlers and, and the uh, power plant operators and those who burn coal for no reason, those who pollute the air, those who do not care about uh, what is happening to the earth. Those are the people who need to be punished. Uh, those are the people who need to be held responsible. Uh, not long ago, we had a very uh, famous face-off between uh, Greta Thunberg and uh, Donald Trump. And uh, that is something that we need to, to do to hold them accountable. Those who do this for, for us, with us, those who do not let us live. So here it goes. Um, <clears throat> they say wars are fought with human enemies. They say wars are fought with human enemies. Our war is against the rising heat to arrest the increase to two degrees, the scorching earth, unclean air to breathe, the melting ice caps, drowning coastal cities. Coal and oil, burn to make our blood boil. Our kids will toil to find, find water in the soil. As we live in this turmoil, we judge your inaction. We judge your inaction, no reaction to the polluting actions of the, pollute, of the political faction. Distraction from expansion of hazards of inaction. Contraction of your conscience, our lives, a transaction a mere caption without compassion. We struggle for adaption as you breathe in your mansions and we live ashen. On the earth, you've made a contraption. Redaction is your only action before the fraction makes, us, makes the subtraction of emissions from your cars and jets for ours. It's all a farce and you should be behind bars. For the rebels like Greta, to punish you traitors, let's do it now, not later, and make the world straighter. As we burn at the equator, and you think you're better than us, you dictator. The impact to act, to hurt the unreact, to a pleas and appeals, they should be sacked and hanged for the spines they have always lacked. It's our air to breathe and the water so sweet and the food we eat that you pollute with your deed. Remember gods can see as you cut down trees and let the heat increase. Die, die before you kill us. Die with the poison that you fill us before the heat can grill us. Forget oil, why don't you come grill us, bill us for the nothing that fulfill us. Make it your last wish to clean your filth 
leave the earth as it is with water to drink, air to fill the lungs with. Promise, promise you will save us from the poison that you gave us. You won't engrave us. Promise, promise that you will save us. The world will burn and the skies will fall. The world will burn and the skies will fall. Killers of the earth die and save us all. Thank you. Nancy, you're on mute. Hi, sorry. Thank you so much, Asha. I think everybody's still absorbing uh, <laughs> um, what you said, and I think it was very, very impactful. So I just wanted to let everybody have that a minute to absorb. Thank you so much for that powerful uh, citation as well. Um, I am going to um, share a poem that I, I think it, it was sort of one of the first poems that I wrote. Uh, to give you a bit of context, I grew up in a state in India, in North India, um, where um, violence against women is the highest, um, any form of violence. Um, and um, I think, um, and, and, and I think one of my reasons to move to uh, switch from technology to social sector was, uh, you know, seeing where I where I'd grown up and I wanted to create an um, impact in the lives of these women and um, children by whatever means that I could. So um, this is sort of a poem that I wrote. Um, I went back into the mind of uh, the little, little me and, um, and wrote it. So I'll begin. It's called Not a Maths Problem. Um, also given uh, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, violence against women in the state, um, you know, there's also very less literacy for them. So mostly goes hand in hand, you know. So I'll start with it. Not a maths problem. I enjoyed learning maths, a rar rarity in my locality. Each problem was a challenge, a puzzle to solve. The book unfolding new problems with every page, and I exhausted them all. On a hunt to find more, I heard of a castle full of books. Happy I was entering the palace, even more be dwelling into the problems that shook. Owner of the castle was happy too. With every problem solved, I would get a reward, a new book, a pat on my back, massage on my thighs, or rub under the hood. I became faster at solving problems and he more frequent with the rewards. Rewards are good, but now I was unsure. I would keep solving the problems assigned with my head down, holding the pen straight with frozen tips of my fingers. A gush of blood rushing through my heart, leaving my face white and cold. Was this I came to the castle for? With every passing day, the castle converted into a maze, a maze of emotions, anger, shame, anxiety, dread, guilt, overwhelmed me. And this maze, I didn't like to solve. With every attempt to solve the maze, I got more lost. The sky was no longer blue and every eye shouted with disgust. I was shy and unsure. So I tried to put a smelly ointment to my blistered soul. But sadly, everyone around me had a bloke nose. This ritual continued as it did, going to the castle with a, like a broken ship, sinking into a bottomless pit. That's all. Thank you, Nancy. I think uh, that was very poignant. And uh, the fact that you've, uh, you, you brought in the entire uh, uh, environment of, of how it takes place um, and how traumatic it can be. Uh, it's, it's, it's great. Um, shall we move forward? And, and, and this for everyone, uh, anyone who wants to recite one of the favorite poems, uh, anything you want to uh, speak, you want to talk about something, uh, please feel free to unmute yourself and, and uh, uh, talk to us. Right, Nancy, uh, 
I should go next. Sure. Um, All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is uh, this is going to be a bit of a poetry marathon, so <laughs> I, I hope everybody is uh, okay with it. The the next poem that I'm going to recite is is about uh, poverty. It's about uh, all those people, all those unfortunate who are not able to find a roof, uh, who are not able to find something to eat. Uh, I come from a developing country. Uh, I'm in India, and 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 uh, it's it's a rampant issue here. Uh, a lot of a lot of things are being done, and yet they uh, somehow are unable to percolate to the lowest strata of the society, uh, the bottom of the pyramid that we talked about. Uh, it's this is this is just a, a small attempt to bring their issues to the fore, to just highlight what they go through in in emotions and words. When the skies thunder and the clouds weep. When the skies thunder and the clouds weep, under the dripping roofs, the unfortunate sleep. When the skies thunder and the clouds weep, under the dripping roofs, the unfortunate sleep. When the sun burns and the earth cracks. When the sun burns and the earth cracks, they drink their thirst and hunger do they eat. When the rich live in peace, when the rich live in peace, in pieces do the poor live. They hide in their tattered darkness. They hide in their tattered darkness that blinding wealth can't see. When the world inhales clean, when the world inhales clean, unjust poison do they breathe and millions die gasping in vain. Upon their graves, humanity grieves. Upon their graves, humanity grieves. Thank you, everyone. Nancy, back to you. Sasha, that was a very... Uh... So true, and I think that reminds me of, um, I mean, how a COVID relief was uh, carried out right after the pandemic hit us. And there was a lot of focus suddenly on the poor and helping the poor. And I think after a couple of months, it has just vanished and we don't know what's happening with them or about them. So, um, yep, I will, I, I'll share the link of my probably, uh, a blog with you, Abhi, you can go and read it as in many Um So I actually, I, I write a lot in Hindi, which is sort of the first language of mine um, uh, growing up. Uh, but just considering the audience here, um, I'll share another one, another piece of mine, which I think I wrote, I'd written, I'd written two poems when this pandemic had hit us. One, from my perspective, I had just moved to a, a new city and it was very overwhelming. And one from the perspective of these migrants who were actually trying to go back home and they had no means of transportation, uh, no buses, no trains, and they were just walking on these roads, it's scorching heat. They had no food, no water. And uh, the only hope that was uh, keeping them alive was that they'll reach their ho house or home one day. So even though it's in my regional language, I'll probably go ahead and recite and share a bit of translation um, um, as I recite it. Um, so uh, the name, of, name is Mai uh, Pravasi Hu, which means I am a migrant. Um, in uchi imarton ki ite lagata hu, aksar tumhare gharo mein bhi aata. Which means that I build these houses for you. Uh, and I, I am often a part of them. In uchi imarton ki ite lagata hu, aksar tumhare gharo mein bhi aata hu. Is shahar ke liye dhero kamata hu. Tab usme se apna hissa paata hu. That means I earn a lot for the city and I get a portion of it for myself. Is shahar ke liye dhero kamata hu, to usme se apna hissa paata hu. 
हक तो नहीं इस शहर को अपना कहूं दट मीन्स आई कांट कॉल दिटी माई ओन ना जाने क्यों भोर से संध्या तक इसे सवारने में लगाता हूं आई डोंट नो बाई एम पुटिंग फोर्टीन आवर्स ऑफ माई वर्क टू मेक दिटी ब्यूटी सो हक तो नहीं इस शहर को अपना कहूं ना जाने क्यों भोर से संध्या तक इसे सवारने में लगाता हूं अदृश्य ही हूं शायद कि यूं भूखा प्यासा चला जाता हूं पर किसी को नजर भी नहीं आता मीन्स प्रॉब्लम आई एम इनविजिबल आई एम वॉकिंग थर्स्टी इन हंगरी बट नो बडी कैन सी मी पूछा तो नहीं तुमने पर बता दू कि अभी भी रस्ते में ही हूं यू हूं मैं आई मीन्स यू डेंट आस पर लेट मी जस्ट टेल यू दैट आई एम स्टिल वॉकिंग ऑन माई आई एम ऑन माई वे बैक होम पहुंचने की उम्मीद में अपने गांव आने का आमंत्रण दिए जाता हूँ आना जब मेरे गांव तो उसे अपना ही बताना दैट मीन्स वेन यू रीच माई विलेज टू कॉल इट योर ओन और अगली बार जब शहर बसाना तो किसी को प्रवासी मत बताना means next time you set up your city your metros don't call anybody a migrant there so that was one for me um thank you nancy um i think utsav if you can uh, if you can uh, uh put your video on and unmute yourself uh, daniel i'll also uh, uh request you to if if uh we can switch the spotlight off to uh what's up hi am i audible yes yes what's up yes you are okay uh thank you very much i am sorry i joined a bit late so i'm not sure if you're following any particular theme um but uh i just wanted to share uh, probably uh uh these days being covid times uh, you know we are even as we fight our daily battles and uh, we fight uh, uh, for uh, climate change and energy and other things which are important to us um all of our friends and family are quite far away and if uh, i'm 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 based in nairobi uh, but my family is in india uh, so you know thinking of friends and family can always bring you comfort and uh, i think uh, i just wanted to share uh probably a poem which is quite kind of relevant in these covid times uh, so that we remember the importance of friends and friendship and this is a poem by khalil gibran uh he was a poet uh, who lived in the 1800s and uh, um yeah these are his words uh, but i think uh, the feelings are something which we all share so uh please is bear with me as i do an imperfect rendition friendship and the youth said speak to us of friendship your friend is your needs answered he is your field which you sow with love and reap with thanksgiving and he is your board and your fireside for you come to him with your hunger and you seek him for peace when your friend speaks his mind you fear not the nay in your own mind nor do you withhold the eye and when he is silent your heart ceases not to listen to his heart for without words in french all thoughts all desires all expectations are born and shed with joy that is unacclaimed when you part from your friend you grieve not for that which you love most in him may be clearer in his absence as the mountain to the climber is clearer from the plain and let there be no purpose in friendship save the deepening of the spirit for love that seeks aught but the disclosure of its own mystery is not love but a net cast forth and only the unpro- unprofitable is caught and let your best be for your friend if he must know the ebb of your tide let him know its flood also for what is your friend that you should seek him with hours to kill seek him always with hours to live for it is his to fill your need but not your emptiness 
so i hope uh, <laughs> that uh, uh, reminds us all of uh, the importance of our friends and uh, what they mean to us especially in times and the next time we meet them we're able to tell them how much we cherish them um thank you that's so great observe uh, there's also a request for uh, sharing a link for thank that thank you one. very much if you if you can just put a link uh, to that one on the chat box that'd be great yeah um, just in yeah name sorry ashay i just um, i think it, 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 what to serve sort of uh, shared um uh, spark something and my mind so basically i think i completely sort of uh, could relate to this poem and he's one of my favorite uh, po poets um and i echo the feeling of you know uh, with covid uh, what had happened uh, with a lot of us was we were stuck in different cities and we couldn't visit home or parents or meet friends etc and um, i think something similar had happened to me i'd moved into a new city a week ago um just a week ago and the lockdown happened and i was very very overwhelmed so i think asha since it connects i'm going to share one of my poem poems and then i'll hand it over to you absolutely um, i think there was this question that was just going on in my mind um, that what really is home uh, because i'd been moving cities before that but i'd never felt this overwhelmed and um, so um, here it is it's called home so So basically, what is home? Is it a place you were born in, or the apartment that you recently bought? Is home a place? Is it a feeling, or or is it a person? Or the palace that you build in your mind? Is it the heart that wanders around? Is heart constant, or does it change with time? age heartbreaks successes and failures can you travel with it or do you travel to reach home but is home just you and you keep looking around that that is all from me ashay out thank you thank you uh uh so abhi uh, if if you would like to uh Unmute yourself and and recite the poem that you want to. That would be great. And it's 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 uh, really heartening to see uh, uh, to to see uh, your participation as well. Thank you so much. Um, so I'll paste the name in the chat. It's called "You See, I Want a Lot," and I just um, have like a collection of poems that I like. And I was scrolling through it to see if there were any that I thought. um might resonate with people here and that might feel relevant to sort of this impact theme and the reason i chose this one is because um it sort of it makes me think of impact careers so people who have careers that have impact goals and um yeah that's kind of what it conjures in me so interested to see what other people think um so this poem is by reina maria rilke um i don't know if i pronounced that right um and it's called you see i want a lot you see i want a lot perhaps i want everything the darkness that comes with every infinite fall and the shivering blaze of every step up so many live on and want nothing and are raised to the rank of prince by the slippery ease of their light judgments but what you love to see are faces that do work and feel thirst you love most of all or you have not grown old and it is not too late to dive into your increasing depths where life calmly gives out its own secret and that's it thank you for listening that's that's uh, that's great it's it, it does resonate very well with the with with what we are uh, doing here and what we're trying to do uh, so thank you so much for uh, for reciting that uh, for us uh, and, and thank you for for joining us and for listening uh, we do have about uh, 20 more minutes to go so uh, nancy if if i could uh, just go ahead and and uh, recite another poem please please um amil do you raise your hand do you want to share something about this what did you feel in 
Yeah, Emmanuel, uh, if, if uh, you'd like to say something. You are on mute, I guess. He'll have to unmute yourself. We can't hear you. Probably check the settings. I think Asha, we could probably could probably go with your recitation and then could come sure. back to what Anil had to say. Yeah, go ahead. Right. Um, so the next uh, poem that I'm going to recite uh, is uh, it's it's about refugees. This is a this is an old poem by uh, W. H. Auden, and uh, it's called Refugee Blues. Say this city has 10 million souls. Some are living in mansions and some are living in holes. Yet there is no place for us, my dear. Yet there is no place for us. Once we had a country and we thought it fair. Look in the atlas and you might find it there. We cannot go there now, my dear. We cannot go there now. In the village churchyard, there grows an old yew. Every spring, it, it blossoms anew. Old passports cannot do that, my dear. Old passports cannot do that. The consul banged the table and said, if you've got no passport, you're officially dead. But we are still alive, my dear. But we are still alive. Went to a committee. They offered me a chair asked me politely to return next year. But where shall we go today, my dear? Where shall we go today? Came to a public meeting. The speaker got up and said, if we let them in, they will steal our daily bread. He was talking of you and me, dear. He was talking of you and me. But I heard the thunder rumbling in the sky. It was Hitler over Europe saying they must die. We were in his mind, dear. We were in his mind. Saw a poodle in a jacket fastened with a pin. Saw a door open and a cat let in. But they weren't German Jews, my dear. But they weren't German Jews. We went down the harbor and stood upon the quay. Saw the fish swimming as if they were free, only 10 feet away, my dear, only 10 feet away. Walked through the wood, saw the birds in the trees. They had no politicians and sang at their ease. They weren't the human race, my dear, they weren't the human race. Dreamed, I saw a building with a thousand floors, a thousand windows and a thousand doors. Not one of them was ours, my dear. Not one of them was ours. Stood on a great plain in the falling snow. 10,000 soldiers marched to and fro, looking for you and me, dear. Looking for you and me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Asha. I think that was a, a very moving, <laughs> to say the least. Um, um, I think Abby, you're sharing amazing suggestions and I think that's the type of poetry even I sort of very much relate to. Thank you for sharing all these amazing suggestions. Um, I would like to also invite um, 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 Mayank, you did want to share, share a poem, right? So um, feel free to unmute yourself, turn on your video if you're comfortable and, uh, and go ahead. So what I want, I, I do want to make a point also and then share a poem by Ravi Das, sure. uh, which is that what you, that poetry in the social sector also tends to create some utopias. And I think whatever utopias that we have had, whatever things that can move a lot of people uh, for social change do come from poetry, do come from the imagination that poetry entails. And I think that is also one of the functions that poetry or any art form can play. Uh, and so what the poem that I'm reciting is by a 15th century poet called, I think people from India know him, uh, is Ravi Das or Rehdas. And this poem is called Begam Pura, 
or the sorrowless city and this is a poem from the 15th century uh, imagining what a sorrowless city can be uh, the regal realm with the sorrowless name we call it begampura city a place with no pain no taxes or care none owns property there no wrong doing worry terror or torture oh my brother i have come to take it as my own my distant home where everything is right they do this or that they walk where they wish they stroll through fabled palaces unchallenged oh says ravidas a tanner now set free those who walk beside me are my friends uh also for a lot a little context a tanner now set free in the context of india with caste playing such an important role uh you know the 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 profession of tanning was almost close to serve them and so he's imagining himself set free uh and walking with his friends on the road and that is probably the kind of world that we are trying to create in india till now and a lot of people are challenging those very notions that they are asking okay uh thank you mayank uh, i think you also uh, made a very important point that poetry has the uh, has a power to create a utopia i think uh, in a lot of cases uh, especially mine poetry also has a power to create a dystopia uh, i think poetry moves in these two ex- extremes it's either everything is seen through the rose colored glasses and or or everything is seen through dark colored uh, lenses it's it's important to understand that uh, the the art of poetry and and the medium of poetry is to be used to create awareness and uh, poetry by nature uh, has to be has to be strong has to be uh, it has to delve deep into the minds and etch itself uh, into into the hearts of of the people who are listening to it so that it moves them uh, and i think that's the purpose of of what we are also trying to do here uh, uh emmanuel uh would you like to say something do you want to recite something uh, yes. please go ahead hello my name is emmanuel from united states your voice is very very faint emmanuel you'll have to probably keep okay. the mic close to your mic yeah uh, yes better okay. better my name is emmanuel mushi from united states of tanzania i remember when i was at the bank in the advanced level one of the points which make me more energetic and more authentic now so the point is called the if we must die by cloud cloud and see us the poem it says that if we must die but to be like the hope hang and depend in a glorious hope so if we must die oh not just no not let us not no about that so i remember some of that verses which make me energetic and so authentic and more creative up to now so after being going to medical school i was remember only that poem from advanced level so i was been living with that single verse which makes me more energetic i understand how to organize my energy and skill to measure my best so it is better to die in fighting instead of dying hopeless like any so for example like covid in our country so many people die and in the way they are on pandemic up to now maybe we are on the scene so so many people were dying because people were not like they were not they they were they were not see the disease like a killer disease like a, maybe top top world leadership so so many people were dying and the creative people are there so now we are live we are obtain this vaccine so that we are prevent people to be ill now we see we prevent so many people to die but the area we are able to produce that vaccine and then we still put it 
injected the people so that you can prevent people from dying. So people were dying hopeless. And they were there dying seniors and the professor for the But we are not working together and organizing our skills from prior, from the beginnings of the COVID era. So this poet tried to help me to know how to understand my purpose as a clinician, as a as the experience clinician in maternal health, in rescue maternal health and newborn in the United States of Tanzania up and inventing my product. So I love that point because I don't like people to die hopeless. We need to help people to make the world a better place to live. Thank you. Thank you so much, Amal, for sharing that. I think your voice was still a little bit faint for me, but um, really could understand the um a place you were coming from um and passion that you uh, brought while speaking about the poet and the poem and the impact it had created on your life so thank you so much Iman, for sharing that um so i think we just have a couple of um, more minutes just want to check in if anybody has any favorite poem they want to recite in otherwise uh, i'm gonna hand it over to ashe and we'll close with an amazing poem from ashe Um, all right. Uh, great. Uh, thank you, Manuel. Uh, so, uh, I, I decided one poem on uh, refugee. Uh, I think if you would recall a couple of years ago, I think three, four years ago, there was a, uh, there was a picture uh, that moved the entire world of a boy, of a Syrian boy who had, uh, who was lying on the shore uh, in, in, on the beach uh, and he had drowned. And those were Syrian refugees and their uh, boat had uh, uh, capsized and, and they had drowned. So it was a very moving picture. Uh, it was something that, uh, that really moved me as well. And uh, I'm going to, I, I wrote something for it. Uh, his name was Alan Kurdi, and I, I wrote something for it, uh, and, and uh, I hope you like it. Ami said, we will find what we did not have. Ami said, we will find what we did not have as soon as we reach the shore. She even dressed me for freedom today. I could not have asked for more. Ami said, we will find what we did not have as soon as we reached the shore. She even dressed me for freedom today. I could not have asked for more. I understand now what she meant. I understand now what she meant when she said, soon we will know no pain. No tears will dry on Abu's face. And Ami will be happy again. No tears will dry on Abu's face and Ami will be happy again. Sitting in the boat, I was thinking what I would become when I grew. Sitting in the boat, I was thinking what I would become when I grew. Doctor, soldier, or a lawyer, I thought. Doctor, soldier, or a lawyer, I thought but dead, dead body was an option I never knew. Doctor, soldier, or a lawyer, I thought, but dead body was an option I never knew. I breathe in the rough, salty air. I breathe in the rough, salty air. I drown my eyes in the blue sea. Oh, look how big it is from here and how tiny will look the washed up me. Oh, look how big it is from there. And look how tiny will look the washed up me as I'm tossed by the waves for the last time. As I'm tossed by the waves for the last time, I have finally found what we were looking for. I smile as I close my eyes forever. 
I smile as I close my eyes forever. I have found peace on the shore. I have found peace on the shore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ashraf, for sharing that. I think that um, picture sort of gave almost everybody who looked at it goosebumps, right? I think the child, the picture of the child sort of did um, made us question what is sort of wrong, getting wrong with the world right, right now. So um, thank you for sharing that impactful poem. I would invite anybody if you have um, anything to share, um, this the poems that we recited today, or if you want to talk about your favorite poem um, for the next couple of minutes, and then I think uh, we would be closing. Um, all right, uh, I think Nancy, let's, uh, let's close. Uh, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, uh, it was, it was interesting and, and, uh, to, to hear your perspectives and it was also, uh, thank you everyone who, who came ahead and recited, uh, Abhi, uh, thank you for, for giving us your recitation. Also, um, Emmanuel, uh, thank you everyone, Mayank as well. Uh, and 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 just thank you everyone for joining. This was this has been an interesting session, especially for Nancy and me. Uh, we enjoy writing and reading poetry, and and uh, it would be great if we can connect as well. Uh, beyond this, uh, uh, if if you have access to Brella, please do connect with us. Uh, thank you everyone. Uh, I think uh, Nancy, we can just uh, leave maybe our email addresses here. For sure. Um, yeah. I'll. I'll mm. Go ahead, type Asha. I'll probably just also thank yeah. everybody for their participation. I think um, the idea for us was actually to just have something which we had a small, intimate, but sort of an impactful session. Um, thank you, uh, everyone, for making that possible for us here. Um, and hope you enjoyed it. Um, hope we get to sort of um, meet in, at the next Ankalp or before a similar platform like this and uh, shared um share more about poems and words how and how words can change the world right so thank you so much um we have our email id on the chat box if you wish to write to us or uh, connect with us later and thanks also to both of you for hosting such a unique uh, session i didn't expect to see poetry on its sankal and i mm -hmm. love reading and listening to poetry so i really appreciate that thank you Thank you, Abhi. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Thank you for uh, joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. And thank you, Daniel, for being the <laughs> very good. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. <laughs> thank nice. you so much. <laughs> Bye.